Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Lisa Oligas. In this edition, Higher Power Garage. We will talk to the founder, mechanic Mike Gideon, and client manager Chrissy Fuller, as well as client Amanda Guyette. But before we welcome our guests, let's take a look at the life-changing achievements which are how this business earns its name. Yanelli Lopez reports. Mike Gideon runs a low-cost repair shop. He wants to help those who are struggling financially. Uh, this, uh, we're replacing all the ball joints on this truck today. Uh, so if he would take this into a regular repair shop, it could cost upwards of $900 to uh, replace all the ball joints and align the front end. Uh, his cost today for the parts is just under $300. But besides hammers and wrenches, he's got a little something extra in his toolbox. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us here, Lord. We're blown away how you use an auto repair shop, Lord, to change people's lives. At Higher Power Garage, Mike doesn't only make cars safer to drive, he also helps others drive into a better future. So Amanda is getting a key for a Toyota Sienna van. And then uh, Jillian is getting a PC Cruiser. Yay. I am so excited. It's been a minute since I've had my own vehicle. Definitely a blessing to have this car. It's been a long year with that one. So glad to have it. Mike helps all those in need, but how these women got here wasn't a smooth road. I was an addict. Um, I overdosed about a year ago, well, a little over a year ago, and that is what caused my two children to be, the state took them and placed them with my mother. Getting back on track can be a challenge, but it can be done step by step. One of those steps, getting a car. Getting a vehicle is the next step to getting my two youngest back. Um, I am working on a home as well. This allows me to get back and forth to work, to the grocery store, and I am capable of doing it on my own. I don't have to rely on anybody else. You know, a lot of people uh, don't really want to accept charity, and, uh, and we don't want this to be charity. We want this to be an empowerment. These ladies didn't just get handed a car. They had to put in the work by taking certain classes. They have to go through our basic auto maintenance class, they have to attend our budgeting class, and uh, they have to submit a budget, and then they have to submit an impact statement. Budgeting is important, as a financial struggle can also create a rocky road. I learned that a budget is very important. I didn't really, I wasn't a budgeter. I lived paycheck to paycheck. And then we did a budget class, so now I know like every dollar does matter and it needs to be written down and it needs to be put to good use. I uh, lost my vehicle um, last year to a title loan because I couldn't finish off the payments. I didn't have a stable job. I just was not having a good year last year. So now I know how important it is not to get a title loan and um, how it's good to budget and how it's good to save um, to earn your own car. We're gonna replace this control arm because it's made into this. And then this is the other ball joint right here we're going to replace. Maintenance class is a life lesson in knowing their vehicle. Now I know how to change a tire. Now I know how to check my oil. I mean, it's really the basic necessities to have a vehicle. Um, I learned and I never knew them before. I didn't know they were even essential to know to have a car. So now I can do those things and I'm more prepared this time with having a vehicle. This helps with them taking control of the wheel on their cars and lives. They have to have a job working a minimum of 30 hours a week. They have to uh, uh, have a budget showing that they can afford the car. We're not going to empower somebody to get a car that they can't afford. You know, driving around without insurance or illegal on tags or things like that. These skills along with the vehicles bring a positive impact for their families too. Now I can um, take my kids to the park. That's a big thing that's hindered us is that we can't just go to the park freely and my son's obsessed with the skate park, so we can finally go to the skate park. I will be able to go see my children. I will be able to take them to and from school. The ones receiving a vehicle only have to pay $500. I paid for it. I got insurance. I got the tags. I got reassured that I can do this, and it's, it's just, it's an amazing thing. The money she contributed supports Mike's mission, helping pay for parts and other things needed to maintain the often donated cars. 
Those are repaired by Mike and ready for a new higher power garage customer. This is actually the second car they donated to us. But donated cars aren't the only way Higher Power Garage receives help. When our senior leadership team found out about the amazing things that Mike were doing here and, and the team here, it's just it's like obviously, you know, obviously they want to get behind that. We're so happy to be able to present five thousand dollars on behalf of the Harvest Foundation to you guys. So excited. One of the stories we heard was how this literally one of the checks that she had to get was to get the car and it just it was going to bring her whole life together. She's got the job, she's got a house, the car was the last thing that she needed and checking that box is all she had to do and higher power made it possible. It's just been amazing how God has brought the right people in and uh, provided us with uh, the resources that we needed and uh, how we've grown. And we're very blessed in that. And, uh, and then the stories, the people that we get to meet every day over and over again, it's just like, uh, it never gets old. Mike heads back to the garage where changing tires, filters, or fan belts really is changing lives. In Joplin, I'm Yanelli Lopez. We are joined now by Mike Gideon, founder of Higher Power Garage, and Chrissy Fuller, the client manager. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us on today. Mike, this is quite a concept, and many people would think, okay, you're in business, so you have to make money. What happened? How long were you a mechanic before something inside you thought, I gotta change this up? Well, I've been a mechanic all my life. I mean, I started when I was 14 years old. I went through Franklin Technical School. When I graduated high school, I went into a repair business and I've been in it all my life. Uh, I did some corporate work for a while, but in 95, I started my own repair shop, mm -hmm. uh, Gideon's Tire and Auto. And uh, I did that, for, I've done that for the last 29 years. I'm still involved in that today. And uh, you know, about uh, seven, eight years ago, I really started feeling like that we were missing something, that there mm -hmm. was something more we could do. Uh, I come across a quote that kind of changed my thinking, and that was, uh, we shouldn't fear failure, but we should fear succeeding at something that didn't matter. And I kind of realized that I'd spent a lot of my life doing something that didn't really matter. So uh, we started looking on how we could leverage our business to do uh, to help people. And uh, we just started slow and in the shop. And before long, it became higher demand than we could do through the business and do business as, as mm -hmm. together. So uh, we had an operation, a building available, and we decided to, uh, to step out and start a nonprofit. Wow, I mean, it's it's booming. I mean, you're getting more notoriety. Sometimes it's repairs, sometimes it's an automobile. How do you decide who gets helped and, and how someone is helped? Well, we have guidelines. We work with 150% of the poverty level and uh, we uh, uh, look at situations. Uh, we're really working with single parent families. That's our primary goal. Uh, working with our veterans and then working with fixed income has really become an issue in the past couple of years with the economy and the, and the condition it's in. So you're a nonprofit. Do you still work with other customers or is this no, you're all in now? We're strictly a nonprofit working with our clients. We don't do any for profit jobs. Yeah. Chrissy, some time has passed since we shot that story about the donation in 2022. Yeah. How many clients have been helped by Howard, Higher Power Garage when it comes to the vehicles? Oh sure. my goodness, I think we are on car number 71? 72. 72. Wow. 72 cars since uh, the doors were opened in 2020. Amazing. Mike, yes. tell us about the classes, because we talked about you, did you develop these lessons or is it a, a program and do you get uh, other instructors to help? When we first started, uh, we were looking at uh, trying to identify uh, barriers that were holding our clients in their situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of things showed up really quick. One was nobody was budgeting. I mean, nobody was budgeting. <laughs> and when we dug into that, we found that a lot of them never understood budgeting. Yeah. And then uh, the other was the cars we were working on were, weren't being maintained. Right. Uh, we found that a lot of our clients were second, third generation single parent families. Uh, mom didn't learn how to maintain her car, so the kid's not learning how to maintain their car. Mm -hmm. And uh, then school stopped doing driver's education, and uh, so it just really kind of fell through the cracks. Yeah, I mean, one big repair could be unaffordable for some mm -hmm. people, Oh, absolutely. Right? Some minor repairs can be unaffordable yeah. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you also did a little bit of that. I mean, you mm -hmm. kind of had reduced pricing. Can that make a difference as to someone even needing a new car? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, if uh, you uh, if you're a single mom and you're living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. and you're just barely getting by as it is. For instance, we had a, a, a mom in not too long ago. She came in for brakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we got her car in on the rack, it was, I mean, the brakes were completely gone. She was in a very dangerous situation. Wow. And when we talked to her, we found that uh, she had exhausted all of her options trying to get her brakes fixed. She had asked friends for help. She had looked at, uh, we asked her why she didn't just, you know, put off her rent or utilities mm -hmm. for a month. She was already behind, so mm -hmm. that was not even an option there. Uh, so without our assistance, she would have really uh, been in a big, big problem. Because then if you don't have a car to get to work, then you might lose your job and then you could end up homeless. I mean, that, right. there, it is a cycle of one thing triggers another. It sometimes. starts a yep. spiral. Yeah. So you describe the effort as wanting to give people a hand up. Do you feel the effort is more successful when clients are invested with both time and some money? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we found, uh, I found with my own kids growing up, the things they earned, they valued a lot differently than the things they were given. And uh, so uh, we really feel like that if we're empowering our clients, if they understand that they can, and that there are people there that will help and there are agencies that will help, uh, but they can improve their lives. And mm -hmm. they can, it, it's a confidence builder. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, it really does make a big difference on whether they're invested in it or if it's just a handout. Yeah. Chrissy, I mean, we saw Arvest donated. You have some donations like the Arvest Bank in the video. Are you finding other sources of revenue as well? And are there other donations to support the effort? We have over the last couple of years. We've had a few organizations that have invested in us. And it's, it's an honor to, to have these organizations see the value in what we're doing at Higher Power. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to donate a vehicle, what are you able to accept? We'll accept about anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're not uh, real picky. It may not be something that we're able to fix, but mm -hmm. we can leverage it into the program no matter what. Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, taking parts off that car to fix another car, scrapping the car and taking the funds off to that car and, and investing into other vehicles. All the money stays in the program. All the money goes toward uh, fixing it. So, well, no matter what you donate, it will get it will go into the program. So, how much maybe would it cost for one car to get it to where it's ready for that user? We typically spend between fifteen and eighteen hundred dollars per vehicle to get them up to the to the condition we want them in. Our goal is to make them uh, everything serviced on the car and fixed that we can find that it can be the next year with nothing but normal maintenance. Yeah. Which is great. Yes. Yeah. So you've been gaining some notoriety. Where do you see Higher Power Garage going next? I mean, have you added any staff? Is it still primarily you doing all the repairs, Mike? Well, no, we have added a technician. In fact, just this week, You're we're... Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's become more than I can do uh, yeah. as a part-time. I, I can't split myself between different jobs anymore. And uh, so by adding a technician, that allows us to focus, somebody to focus on the repairs, mm -hmm. on the low cost vehicles to, to get more done. Uh, you know, we've seen just this year a huge increase in our numbers. And, uh, you know, we went, uh, I think last year we did like 330 repairs for the year. This year we're already at like 200. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, and we're just halfway through the year, so you know we could do five, six hundred repairs this year. Uh, in the low cost vehicles, last year we did sixteen. We've already done twelve this year, so everything is really gaining steam, and uh, yeah. and w that's great. We want that to happen, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want to lose our process in in the growth. Uh, so we're very diligent that we we try to stay very focused on on the reason why we're doing what we do. It's one client at a time. Mm -hmm. It's not the big number. It's the one individual that we're working okay. with. How are, how are people's responses, Chrissy? Tell us a little bit about that when they're applying and you kind of work with the clients. Are there a variety of situations that the people are dealing with when they come to you? Oh my goodness, yes. Everything that you could think of, um, single moms. We've got a lot of elderly clients that are on fixed incomes. We work really close with our veterans. Um, we see everything from, um, I went blank. <laughs> I mean, can this make a difference between somebody uh, losing their job? Have you had situations like that of, I've got to get a vehicle? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like. Um, 
the the lady Amanda Guyette that got the van last year, she needed that vehicle to be able mm -hmm. to get her kids back, to be able to get her own place. So like we see those situations all the time that it, yeah, it can definitely be a spiral effect. Yeah, we're gonna talk with Amanda shortly. Mm -hmm. Mike, how does it feel to know you're helping people get lives on track? It's, it's not just a car here. It's, uh, it's very rewarding. I mean, it truly is. And uh, you know, when we hear stories and, uh, and, we, and people like Amanda, we follow up with. Uh, the other day I ran into a young lady that we'd worked with through our repair program. Uh, she's managing an assistant manager at a subway shop here in town mm -hmm. and uh, doing very well. And those are all things that happen because of not just our, uh, our helping them in a time of, of clutch, but encouragement and, uh, and praying with them and, and you know, just telling them they can do more and they can do better. So it has just a bit of confidence. It is, just yeah. very much so. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we will be joined by Higher Power Garage client Amanda Guyette to see how her life has changed since receiving her vehicle. To newsmakers where we are learning about higher power garage from owner Mike Gideon and Chrissy Fuller the client manager and we are joined by former client Amanda Guyette welcome hi so Amanda we saw in the story we showed earlier that you got your vehicle uh, a few years ago you were hoping to restore your family tell us about life now so I'm still currently working at the detail shop uh, makes two years this year that I've been there uh, my children are back home with me. There, we're going to school and church and just doing all the life things. How has a vehicle made a big difference then in your life? Um, I don't have to rely on anyone or call and ask and then not be able to get that ride to the grocery store or to the doctor's office. I mean, it's a big deal, yeah. really. So you mentioned, you talked about the budgeting aspect in the story. Has that helped with the car and even elsewhere in your life? Yes, it has actually. Um, I'm able to make sure I have the money I need for rent and utilities put back and then I know what I'm able to spend on groceries and hygiene and other household items. And there may be a car repair and oil change, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> Learned about those as well. Yes. <laughs> how, do, how do you think that made a difference as opposed to just someone giving you a vehicle? Um, it, I appreciate it more. I mean, I appreciate the help I was given, but being able to actually pay for the vehicle myself and not just having it handed to me, I guess there's more of an appreciation there than if it was just handed to me. Mm -hmm. So Chrissy, tell us a little bit, um, Jillian was in that story as well. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of an update on Jillian as well? How is she doing? She mentioned taking her sons to the park. Yeah, so Jillian is doing really good. She has actually um, been at the same job also for, I know, a good probably two years now, same as Amanda. Um, her two boys are getting big. She's doing great moving forward. She's, yeah, super proud of both of the ladies. Yeah. yeah. Is it nice to hear those success stories? Oh my goodness, yes, it fills your heart. Yeah. yeah. 
So let's talk about, Amanda, what opportunities has this created for you? I mean, you, you had a job, but it's also helped you maintain a job. Are there other things you've been able to do, social life, uh, other things that it's helped you kind of to be get out there? Um, yes, I'm able to go to different churches. Not, I have a home church, but I get to go spend weekends with my mom and see my brothers. And then if I stay all weekend, we go to church down there and... My mom gets to ride with me or we run around with one of my brothers like it's just family fun and I love it. Yeah, I mean family time. Yeah. It's kind of important to have a vehicle to do that. So Mike, tell us a little bit about some of the success stories as well besides, you know, Amanda's and Jillian's that and, and what that means to you. I mean, it means the world to me. I, it's, it really helps me to know that we're on the right track. We're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, and we're doing it in the way we're supposed to be doing it. The fact that she's able to spend more time with her family, to spend more time with her children, to, be, to spend more time uh, and going to church. These are all things that are really, really important in people's lives. That community and connection mm -hmm. is so important. And uh, so to be able to see that in, their, in her life and in others as well is really, really good. Uh, like I said earlier, we ha I ran into a young lady that um, in a sandwich shop that had been through our program a couple times. I knew she was really struggling, but uh, she's working as an assistant manager now and doing really well. And I got to visit with her a little bit and she just told me uh, how much she appreciated Higher Power Garage. And, uh, and the praying with her and things really had an impact on her life. And uh, that's exactly what we want to have is an impact. We want to share God's love. We want to shine his light. And we want just people to know that they're not, they don't have to do life alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be that hard that we can all work together and really encourage each other. And that's really what it's all about. Amanda, did that make a big difference to you? Not just, it wasn't just about getting a vehicle. There was more to it. There was education there was encouragement how did yes. that impact you um so there were things i learned in the maintenance part of it mm -hmm. that i didn't know um and then the budgeting really opened my eyes to where i was going wrong with my money like just paycheck to paycheck not putting any back here and there for certain things mm -hmm. um because it does help when you have money set back for a new tire because you need a new tire yeah. or an oil change and maybe that paycheck you got, you didn't have the money for it, but you currently have it set back. Because did you feel like you got extra support by going through this program? I did. Um, I had known Chrissy a while before I was introduced mm -hmm. to the Higher Power Garage, um, and she is an amazing woman, and she is very supportive. Um, and Mike, I he really encouraged me in being able to do this. Like, and how does it feel? That, I mean, that it wasn't just you did it. Is it do you feel stronger? Yes, or? I do. <laughs> What do you think it shows to your kids? Um, I believe it shows them that I, I truly have changed my life around and that not that I didn't do it before, but it's a different version of me and they seem to be happier than they were before. So. And so are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was working. So what would you say to other folks who might be in need? What would you want to tell them, Amanda, about, hey, buckling down and, and doing the things they ask? Because some people are like, well, why do I have to, why do I have to do this extra mm -hmm. stuff? Why can't I just get a vehicle? Um, on that, it's if you want it, there are sacrifices that you're going to have to make to be able to get it. You might not want to do the class or the budgeting, but in the long run, it benefits you mm -hmm. if you're willing to put that effort in. Yeah. Well, Mike and Chrissy, tell us, what does someone do 
to contact you. We, you know, had a little bit of a message up there. Is it best to call? Is it best to go yeah. online? There is an application form? Yeah, there is an application on our website, higherpowergarage.org. We have both applications for the low-cost vehicle program and the repair program. You could always call the office at 417-208-5829 or come in and pick up a paper application. We're at 711 North Shipperdecker. Okay. Just come in and say hi, come and pick up an application. So how important to you, Mike, is it that this is kind of an expression of your faith? I mean, it's in the name a little bit. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, it really is all about the faith. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was God's provision that allowed us to open. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a story in that and how that all came about and, and happened. Uh, and, you can uh, tell it. Uh, well, uh, you know, there was, uh, we were really uh, kind of on the fence on what to do. And uh, we were, like I said, the quote really changed the direction of my thought mm -hmm. on how I use the resources God had blessed me with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, do, and I looked at what I was leaving as a legacy. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, if my business ceased to exist, would anything change? And, you know, other than a few families that I've been able to support over the years through the business and friends I've made in the business and things other than that, really the business could go away and it would make no difference to Joplin at all. <laughs> there would be nothing. And uh, so I got looking at how we can leverage a repair shop to make a difference. And uh, one weekend in particular, uh, we had had this idea. I connected with another organization here in, in uh, Texas that uh, had a similar ministry mm -hmm. and uh, kind of got a little bit of information from them. And uh, we were kind of really looking at that. And I do a class in our church called Kazone, which is about finding your God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that, cl in that class, we asked the question, um, if God would bless you in anything you would do, what would you attempt? And mm -hmm. in that class in January of 2020, I answered that question with a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, uh, through uh, a very amazing weekend, uh, I really truly believe God directed us to start that path. And uh, through the process, COVID hit. We were, <laughs> what do we do? You know, and and we just continued on. We at, when COVID shutdown came, we had not. When there was no corporation. There was no license. No nothing. All of that was obtained through the COVID shutdown, which told us was impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told us our 501c3 could be two years. We actually had it in mid-July. Uh, we opened on time on June 1st of 2020, and uh, we haven't looked back. Yeah, and growing and growing. Well, yeah. thank you for all you do, Mike and Chrissy. Amanda, thank you so much for sharing your story, and congratulations on your success. Keep thank up the you. good work. And thank you all for being here. And if someone wants to donate, we hope they'll reach out to you yes. online at the store. Just give you a call. Yeah. Thank you all Thank for you being so here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to all our guests and for sharing that information about Higher Power Garage. And thank you for watching Newsmakers.